Hi guys, it's Ewan here. And I've been asked by Nathan to talk a bit about my experience with the Holy Spirit. And I think the big one for me was a Soul Survivor, which for those of you that don't know is a, or was a brilliant um, summer camp uh, run for young people, where it was great worship, uh, prayer, talks, um, generally great weather, sometimes not. Um, like, yeah, it's just a great experience. And one night I was just praying um, when I was about... 18 and I had a lot on my mind uh, I was about to do a gap year in the Isle of Wight and was really looking forward to it like it was it, I meant I was able to move away from home it meant that I could experience life outside of my normal living and um, and I got to start stepping in the footsteps that God wanted me to take I was really excited about it but at the same time really worried like I'd never really like moved away from my home for too long um, I've been to the island before, but like never really knew anyone. It was all like this massive experience, and it really terrified me. Um, and I was just praying and praying, just like worship, and I was just there, like God, if you're there, then just like. And I knew He was there, like I'd already given my life, but God just helped me in this situation, helped me feel Your presence, helped me feel that comfort. And it was at that point where I got like this bubble that it felt like around me. Um, yeah, and it just felt like I got this warmth, like, it didn't feel like anyone else was there. Um, I didn't need to worry about what other people were thinking of me, but it was just me and God. And all I felt was this warmth and this amazing comfort. And that could only be down to the Holy Spirit and through God. Like, it just meant, like, I, I left the tent that night and was like, yeah, this is God. Like, this is God's will. Um, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to have the best time of life. And I did. Like, those two gap years on the Isle of Wight were amazing for me. And... I, whenever I've struggled, I've always just lent on that experience. The fact that I can get that comfort, the fact that I can get that warmth, that strength from worry turning that so quickly into comfort. And we can get that too. So today is Pentecost Sunday, which is when we think about the disciples receiving the Holy Spirit for the first time. It's said that the Holy Spirit came like a rushing wind and helped and guided the disciples to start spreading the good news of Jesus in Jerusalem and then the whole world. Now, like I said, it's coming like a rushing wind. And so I thought we could do a challenge with this. I here have made a paper aeroplane. It's my very own one. And I'm going to throw it outside and see how far I can get it to go. And maybe you could do the same with your families. Right. I'm ready to give my paper aeroplane a go. Here we go. Let's see how we do. I'm pretty impressed. My paper aeroplane almost made it to the house. How far can yours get? But we're actually today going to hear a way more impressive story than a paper aeroplane almost reaching a house. So sit back and enjoy. It was 50 days since Jesus rose to life again, 10 days since he went back into heaven. Jesus' friends had been meeting together, but they were nervous. They met behind closed doors, concerned that the authorities would come after them. They were all gathered together for Pentecost, the festival that celebrated the harvest. Suddenly, they heard a sound. The room where they were meeting was filled with what looked like tongues of fire. The flames came to rest on each of their heads. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. People from all over the world were in Jerusalem for the festival. Suddenly, they heard the disciples speak in different languages. Bonum es Deus! Dios es bueno! Dios es bueno! Hagathos! God is good! You are bon! God is you good! You are bon! God is good! These bystanders were amazed. They heard ordinary Jewish people speaking in their own language. What did it all mean? Some thought the disciples were drunk. Peter knew what was happening. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. We're not drunk. It's still early morning. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Peter told the crowd that Jesus had died to save them 
and they should believe and be baptised. Thousands did believe. So who exactly is this Holy Spirit bloke? I mean, you'd be forgiven for thinking he's just turning up now, but actually we see him throughout the Bible. We see him even in the very beginning, in the second verse of the Bible, we see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So he was there in the very beginning. We also see him there at uh, Jesus' baptism. And Jesus even teaches to us to baptise people in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. See, as Christians, we believe that the Holy Spirit is God, just like the Father is God and just like Jesus is God. So, like the other two parts, we believe that the Holy Spirit has existed for all eternity and is full of God's power and God's grace and God's love for us. But at Pentecost, something about our relationship with the Holy Spirit changed. Before Pentecost, only a few were filled by the Holy Spirit. We see him fill people like Gideon and Joshua in very particular circumstances. But at Pentecost, the Spirit was poured out for everyone to experience. See, in the Old Testament, we see the temple of God as this really important theme. The temple is this place where God dwells on the earth. It's a place where he exists to be among his people. And we see this relationship between God and his people. And then the people disobey him and they're exiled from the land and the temple is destroyed. But the minute people return, they're desperate to rebuild this temple. Because for them, it's the place where God dwells. It's the place where God exists among them. But... As Christians, we don't really have temples. We have church buildings, but they're just that, just buildings. And they're very pretty to look at. Some of them have really nice architecture, but they're nothing more than just a building. There's nothing special about them. And that's because Paul writes to us in Corinthians, and he says that, do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? See, just as God dwelled in the first temples, he now dwells in us. We don't need those buildings for God to dwell in, because he's dwelling in us, in our hearts and in our lives. So I've got this balloon here, and the thing about balloons is they're designed for a purpose. They are designed to be filled up. And you could fill it with anything though, couldn't you? You could fill it with marbles. I've got a pen here. You could fill this balloon with pens and try and fill it up to the brim like that. But that's not what it's designed for. It's not designed to be filled with pens or marbles. This balloon is designed to be filled with air. And in the same way, we're designed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we talked a couple of weeks ago about how sometimes we try and fill our lives with stuff. We try and fill our lives with the latest gadgets and gizmos and the things which we think, oh, that's the important stuff. But actually, you're designed to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Now, if you want to be filled with God's Holy Spirit, all you have to do is invite him. All you have to do is ask. It's awesome. So what I want to suggest is maybe you could pause this video and do just that. And it doesn't matter if it's your first time doing it or your hundredth time doing it. It's all it's exactly the same. All you do is close your eyes and say, come Holy Spirit, come. I invite you into my life. Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. So this is a time when um, I really felt the Holy Spirit was with me um, and I just felt his presence uh, calm me and keep me relaxed um, in a time of fear um, and worry. Um, so I was uh, had the amazing opportunity to go over to a different country to work for a church for a bit. Um, and I didn't really know anyone, um, I'd only just been messaging them. Um, I didn't really know the country very well, I've only been there once before, um, and it was very far away from home. Uh, so I took a 12 hour flight over uh, towards America. Um, yeah, completely different time zone. Uh, and when I landed, it was about seven o'clock local time, but back at home, it was about three in the morning. So I had no one to talk to from back home. Uh, I was by myself. Uh, I had to meet someone that uh, I've never met before, I've only just called them like once before, um, a completely different country and I had to figure everything out for myself. Now I was worried and I was quite fearful um, of what was going to happen because 
uh, it's just a completely new, different uh, experience for me. I was pushed out of my comfort zone um, and I was just in an area where I just didn't really know what was going to happen. So I was standing at customs waiting to be seen through border control um, and I was just praying in my head that uh, God will be with me, that he will calm my nerves and that I would feel his presence. Um, yeah, and from that moment instantly, um, I just felt God's presence was with me. Uh, I felt calm. I felt at ease. Uh, I felt excited in, instead of feeling fearful and worried that um, what was going to happen, who I was going to meet, um, what if they don't turn up. Uh, I just felt God was with me and I felt just so peaceful and calm about the whole situation. Um, and I knew God's uh, work was in what I was doing. So just being able to feel God's uh, Holy Spirit with me at that time was uh, just really reassuring, really uh, peaceful. And as soon as I met the person that I was uh, going to be working with that picked me up from the airport, um, again, I was very relaxed. Uh, I didn't have to worry and I felt like I was in a place where I lived for years of my life. So yeah, it, I was just standing in customs, just praying in my head with no one with me. But I knew God was with me and I felt his Holy Spirit when I asked for him to uh, just keep me calm uh, in that time.